You are watching South Asia News Line in the Hadith of Stories. We are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 20th of February. PM Modi kicks off big infra push in Jammu and Kashmir, says Article 370 was main hurdle. There is misinformation, says Bangladeshi politician on India Out campaign. And UN to explore appointment of envoy to engage with Taliban. And now for all the details. In a mega development push ahead of general elections, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday inaugurated and laid foundation stone for multiple development projects worth over 32,000 crore rupees from Jammu City. He also flagged off the first electric train in the valley along with distribution of appointment letters to about 1,500 new government recruits. In his address, PM Modi termed the Article 370 as hurdle for development and said since its abrogation, the region of Jammu and Kashmir has been moving towards balanced development. Taking a dig at the opposition, he said he is glad Jammu and Kashmir is getting freedom from dynastic politics those who were only concerned about their families and not about the interest of the common citizens. Earlier, only disappointing news of bombs, kidnappings and separation used to come from Jammu and Kashmir, but now Jammu and Kashmir is developing and moving forward, he said. आर्टिकल 370 की थी, आर्टिकल 370 की थी, इस दीवार को भाजपा की सरकार ने हटा दिया है। अब जम्मू कश्मीर एक संतुलित विकास की ओर बढ़ रहा है। in a symbolic show of dissent against the Indian government's proposal of guaranteed support prices for pulses, corn and cotton, agitating farmers on Tuesday grew onions on the highway divider at northern Punjab-Haryana border. The government has offered guaranteed support prices for pulses, corn and cotton in a bid to break a deadlock with the protesting farmers after week-long clashes between security forces and protesters. However, rejecting the proposal, the farmer leaders have declared they will continue the protest and march towards capital New Delhi on Wednesday. Tear gas and barricades were earlier used to deter the farmers, an influential voting bloc in India, months ahead of a general election due by May. Shambu barrier ke footpath par humne piyaji se li laga ke bataya hai, pi jo humare kheti ka rule hai. खेती कहीं भी हो सकती है जहां मिट्टी अच्छी हो उधर ही खेती होगी जैसे ये बोल रहे हैं सिर्फ दाल के ऊपर ही एमएसपी देंगे गेहूं के और दान के ऊपर ही देंगे तो ये देख लो एमएसपी इस पर भी हमारे को मिलनी चाहिए जो 23 हमारी फसलें हैं 23 फसलें पर मिलनी and a leader of the Bangladesh Islami Front, who is in New Delhi, underscored the importance of India-Bangladesh ties, the misinformation campaign against India and terrorism in South Asia. A report. SUM Abdul Samad, the Secretary General of the Bangladesh Islami Front on Tuesday, underscored the importance of growing India-Bangladesh ties and said the recent India Out Online campaign, especially after elections, is driven by hardline elements who spread hate and misinformation. Speaking during his visit to New Delhi, Samad said cordial ties are crucial for both the neighbouring countries as he highlighted the increased connectivity in recent years. एक रॉन्ग इनफॉरमेशन वहाँ में हो गए हैं पहले से जो इंडिया समेत डॉन में बांग्लादेश से बहुत हाथियाल ले आया वगैरह ले आया ये जुलम किया सतम किया इस तरह की बात बांग्लादेश में बहुत ज्यादा पहला ना है तो इंडिया को ये लाजम है ये देखा ना हम तुम्हारे खलब नहीं हम तुम्हारे दोस्ती है when asked about terrorism and religious fundamentalism in South Asia and Pakistan's role, Samad emphasized the need for an establishment in Islamabad that does not let terrorism to flourish. No, Pakistan has no impact in South Asia. It should be a good government, but it can't be terrorism. It should be a good government in Pakistan, but it should be a good government in Asia.
Moving on, raging forest fire in parts of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir has become a cause of worry among the locals as it is severely affecting the ecology of the region. Residents have lamented the Pakistani authorities have taken no action so far. Residents in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir have raised concern over raging forest fires near Muzaffarabad and lamented inaction by authorities to check such incidents which are affecting the biodiversity of the region. Widespread deforestation and felling of trees have already affected large swathes of forest area in POK and locals have to brace the hazardous consequences. They have requested the Pakistani authorities to take strict action against forest arsonists and deploy guards to protect the wildfire. The rest of the forest is going to burn, the whole jungle is going to burn. No one can be able to do it. 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 Locals have now become increasingly intolerant of the Pakistani occupation as Islamabad consistently maintains a negligent attitude and ignores even their basic demands. UN Chief Antonio Guterres on Monday said that he will begin consultations on the appointment of a UN envoy to coordinate engagement between Afghanistan's de facto Taliban authority and the international community. Guterres said that Taliban representatives did not accept an invitation to a meeting of international envoys to Afghanistan that he convened in Doha. He added that he hoped Taliban officials would attend the next such meeting. The Taliban took over Afghanistan in 2021 and since then it has imposed harsh rules on women, making their daily lives miserable. Following such harsh restrictions, no country has formally recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. We want a Afghanistan in peace, peace with itself and peace with its neighbors, able to assume uh, uh, the commitments and the international obligations of a sovereign state and uh, 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 at the same time uh, doing so in relation to the international community, <coughs> the other countries and its neighbors and in relation to the rights of its own population. The latest edition of the Indian Navy's multilateral exercise Milan 2024 kicked off in the city of destiny, Vishakhapatnam, on Monday. With the largest ever participation of around 50 countries, the exercise is being conducted over a duration of nine days and is divided in harbour and sea phase. The harbour phase, which began on Monday, comprises operational conferences and seminars, along with cultural exchange and a city parade at the RK Beach. In the sea phase, participating navies, along with the Indian Navy, will be engaged in maritime patrol operations, large force maneuvers along with anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface operations aiming at honing the skills. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.